All right, guys, let's uh, wax up number eight. So that is our central incisor. Um, so first thing we want to look at is the outline. So the outline we're looking for is that we have these uh, this mesial line angle. We have this distal line angle. We have this mesial developmental groove and a distal developmental groove. So that is on the facial side. Um, we want to see the incisal edge. Uh, so the incisal edge in the mesial is 90 degrees and distal is more rounded. Um, so that is on the facial, just the line angle goes straight and then it rounds on the distal with a rounded incisal and a more 90 degree in the mesial with two developmental depressions. When we look at the lingual side, uh, and we're going to mark this up on our die as well, here we have our uh, mesial marginal ridge, we have our distal mar marginal ridge, we have the cingulum here. So here we also have a depression and a depression. Uh, in, the, in the fossa, in the lingual fossa. And these depressions with the marginal ridges will create your cingulum. That's, it. That's this W we see in the middle. So um, just remember the marginal ridges also, these kind of run the same um, angle, unlike in the, in the facial, it's more straight, uh, rounded, and then straight on the facial. Uh, so let's mark the same thing on the die itself. I like to keep the original so I can look at it. And then in the die, we would screw it in. And then with the pencil, we will do the same thing, is uh, mark the uh, the line angles that we're talking. So on the facial, we should have this, this more rounded on the mesial side. So the die follows the anatomy. And then we were going to have a more straighter on the distal side. So straighter on the distal, rounded on the mesial, and then we should have a, two depressions. And on the uh, palatal side, we have the we have two marginal ridges that are going to run equally on both sides. And then they follow this; they form the cingulum that we should have. So if you mark up, it should help you um, with wax. Of course, wax is going to cover it. So just mark up lightly. Uh, we're going to make a contact from the cusp tips, basically. Uh, the horns to the incisal edges. So, so now for the first step, we can either use a uh, number seven spatula, uh, or we can use PKT one, the bigger end, to uh, load up our initial wax. So with this uh, with the uh, spatula, so we're just loading around the margin. So you always want to work in one area and then let the wax cool and then move to a separate area. Um, and then you just kind of go around our total margin, melting the wax, letting it set in that uh, in the groove in the margin, which we call the cable surface margin of the prep. And uh, so, yeah, I would just go around a couple times and then fill the rest of the tooth uh, with more wax. So basically one initial layer of wax all the way around. So after we are added our initial coping, our initial first layer, um, you can always use a uh, carver or this UTSA 37, SA 37 to uh, always put your instrument half on the tooth and then half on the wax, and then just go around the margin to clean up the margins. And you can do that continuously throughout the whole waxing. Um, so you just want to clean margin so there is no void, uh, nothing supra or submarginal, and uh, it just flows smoothly. From the, from the plastic tooth to the wax itself. So uh, we can always do that later. So after you have the initial coping, the initial layer, then we'll put it in and screw it tightly so we get the right contact. After you screw it in tightly, uh, now we want to make uh, basically a bridge from this horn, this cusp of the wax we're working on to the adjacent, and then same thing with the lateral incisor. So let's uh, just make a, a bridge that will guide us to give a correct incisal edge. And uh, so that's pretty easy. Just take wax. And uh, you can sometimes have, have the gravity help you. So you can point it downwards. And then just uh, because you have you already have dive loop on the adjacent tooth, it should uh, help to 
on the bridge, you can hold your instrument so it can cool it before you let go. And that's one of the tricks to, uh, to learn is to basically pull the instrument to give it shape. And then you can also use it to, um, till it dries. So we'll continue on giving this kind of a solid bridge across uh, one cusp to another cusp. And then if you like, you can continue building on your incisal edge using that as a support. And then once again, letting gravity kind of help you smooth it out. It's not gonna look perfect, but it's just a good starting point. Now that we have that, now we can go around and create our mesial um, line angle, distal line angle, uh, and then we'll do the same thing. We'll create the mesial marginal ridge and the distal marginal ridge, um, and that'll be the next step. So let's just get work with the same thing, PKT1, and then we'll, we'll work with that one for a chunk of the uh, waxing. So you just start on one end from the top, from the base, and then always create a line and go in one, one, one direction, one motion. Uh, try not to make a habit of going back and forth. and then always move to the other side so you can let the wax cool. So right now we just made that contact with the adjacent tooth and the bridge helps. So once again, we want to have a more straighter on the mesial side and we want a more rounded on the distal edge. So we want to create the same effect, basically a mirror representation I'll take my cool PKT number two, um, just to kind of take some wax out. Just so I have a better view. And you can use any other instru instrument to do this, basically. It's not looking very pretty, but it will. So we keep creating the line angles. And uh, We'll do that on the other side too, on the lingual. So you just want to remember where your line was, uh, the pencil line, and you want the margins to stay on top of that. Uh, don't want to go too distal or too mesial from that. Uh, then that will just make your tooth look either smaller or too much wax or not enough. So always try to remember where the, the line marking was. So now we just created all of our line angles, a marginal ridge and um, trying to stay at the same level as our adjacent tooth. But here, the cingulum is down here. Uh, so I need to take some of the wax out. And you always wanna have a solid base to work with. Uh, so now that we have filled our facial surface, our two line angles um, going around, we have a more straighter than rounder distal with a rounder incisal flat, and then a 90 degree on the mesial. Uh, now we'll give two developmental depressions here. And on the palatal, we have seen we just have our, we just moved our, or carved out our marginal ridges and the cingulum, and we'll give, we'll fill in our lingual fossa and then finish with the cingulum. So let's do the facial. Uh, we can do two ways. You can either add wax or carve down. Um, to carve down, you will basically match it with our 
look down the incisal edge of the adjacent tooth and uh, kind of give it the same uh, just scrubbing brushing motion. So you just want to remove some wax in a line and that will give it the, the shape that you're looking for. Basically, there's an imaginary point that we're both in both of the uh, depressions are going to meet. So just aim for that. And then and just smooth it out however you like. You can carve in one motion um, just so you have an even even surface. So that should just give us some minor uh, depression. You can give a little more in the incisal area. Make a little divot. So the incisal looks decent now. Uh, we have our two developmental depressions. So before we finish, uh, we just want to always make sure we have a correct outline again. So it's outline, uh, anatomy, contact, margins, and shine. So the first uh, outline, we have our correct line angles. Uh, we have correct incisal edge. It matches maybe a little bit short. A little bit short. Um, and then we have our anatomy. We have our developmental depressions that follow in the front, um, in, the, in the facial side. And it matches when you look down from the top. It should match equal distance. Uh, the incisal edge should be same thickness uh, and in the forms that curve um, with all the other incisal edges. And then we look on the palatal side, we should have our mesial marginal ridge and then the distal marginal ridge. We have our cingulum. Uh, we have this uh, basically depressions um, in the ling lingual fossa that are formed with our uh, mesial marginal ridge and the distal marginal ridge uh, that forms a cingulum. Uh, cingulum should be at the same height uh, as the adjacent tooth, so you want to make sure that is on the same level uh, and look from every perspective, every side angle. So uh, when we look from from our right side, from, from the patient's right, we have the tooth follows a contour. Uh, it has this flat, and then the cervical third kind of rounds out. Uh, maybe mine needs to be rounded a little more compared to the adjacent central incisor. Uh, so you look from this angle, make sure it's all rounded look from the other side and make sure it follows the same contour as my tooth. There's a little bit of divot here uh, that needs to be filled out and rounded out. Um, look at the, uh, so we did the outline, uh, we did the anatomy, now we look at the embrasures and the contacts. So we look at the contact and it should be right here in the incisal one third and it follows that and the best strategy is to uh, look through a light, so I would shine a light at this point. Um, so our inside, our mesial contact is correct. Our distal contact should also be that incisal one third. Uh, it should be there. And the best uh, way is to look through the light, and the light should not pass through. Um, also, uh, insert a shim stock. So then we will take this because so far it looks okay. Uh, we'll just uh, look all around, fill in the area under the contact. Don't touch the contact. So I will go around one more time. Uh, make sure the marginal ridge is smooth when I run uh, my explorer or a pencil over it. Uh, smooth marginal ridges, all the edges, all the line angles are nice and rounded. Uh, under the contact is nice and rounded. Um, and then we'll just finally polish it. And the best polishing way is to get a toothbrush and uh, room temperature water and soap and just uh, scrub the brush. And then we can use uh, the penny hose to uh, give it a more uh, buff uh, inside, in, in a type of dot. So now I'll just uh, fix the contacts and then give it a nice shine. So here we just have our final polish shine on our central incisors. Um, and then we have basically our facial side with uh, two embrasures that we need. Uh, we need a more 90 degree on the mesial side, a more rounded incisal edge on the distal. Uh, the contact should be in the right place. The embrasures, embrasures should be nice and open. Um, same thing on the palatal side. We have our marginal ridge. We have our cingulum. We have these two uh, depressions that come into the uh, lingual fossa. Uh, once again, contacts on the incisal region, uh, the cingulum, 
is on the correct height with the adjacent to the incisal edge should uh, look almost the same and uh, more of a decline distally and uh, that's it so always give a well shined product uh, and uh, enjoy more waxing videos.